Hey y'all, this is Randy with Rashley's Border Queue. Got a new toy today. Got an RNV Works Cajun fish cooker, Cajun fryer. We're going to be unboxing it here and putting it together this afternoon. Kind of wash it out and get it ready. I bought nine gallons of oil. This is the eight and a half gallon model. So let me get it unboxed and we'll kind of go through putting the assembly. So we'll be back. Okay, everybody, here's the unit. This is where the jet blows the fire into this tube. And then this tube makes a loop inside the oil. And then the exhaust comes out here. So this is V-shaped on top. The bottom of the unit itself is V-shaped. So any cornmeal that comes off of your food hits this, runs off, runs to the bottom of the V, and it's below the heat. So according to R&V, the area where the cornmeal collects in the bottom never gets above 120 degrees, even if the oil's at 350. So be interesting to see. I know that a lot of my friends have these and they all say they work stupendously. This is the front casters. This is the bracket for the rear wheels. This is the main frame unit. This is the pedestal that the fish fryer is going to mount on. This pedestal mounts here. There's the wheels. We have three baskets. So it'll do a lot of fish frying at the same time. Here's the thermostat, uh, not the thermostat, the thermometer. Before I install it, I'm going to do a boiling water test on it to see how close it is. There's the regulator. The shelf for the outside. So let me get started and as assembly progresses, I'll check in from time to time. Y'all stay tuned. Okay, this is pretty cool. This is the main weldment, they call it. and. All of the items that we're going to need for assembly of the main weldment are all packaged. Hello, camera. Up here. Up here. Up here. There you go. Are all packaged together in one package. And the instructions for that assembly step were in the package. So it's pretty simple. All of the hardware I need for this step is right here. Let me get started. First step is going to be to attach the front casters and the rear axle assembly wherever I laid it down right here rear axle assembly we're going to attach both of these items to the main weldment let me get that done and I'll show you what it looks like okay hey y'all we got the basic assembly done you can see the front casters are bolted on in some previous videos people had complained that these bolts were at an angle when they assembled it well, if the casters are placed where they're aligned here, notice that the hole is offset. It's not drilled in the center of this attachment. So if you turn this around, you're correct. Your bolts would be at a steep angle back this way in order to align with this hole. But if you turn it the proper direction, these holes align perfectly over the holes drilled into the weldment, and the, the bolts are perfectly vertical. So. For those people who complained that these bolts were crooked, you might look to see if you have this piece turned around backwards. One of the other items I noticed, people were complaining that where the pedestal mounts to the weldment, that all of these screw holes didn't line up. But as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four. All four screws lined up perfectly, no problem at all. So I'm not sure what they were running into. Maybe it was just a bad batch, a bad run on assembly. <clears throat> so the basic assembly of the weldman is done. I'm gonna move on to the next steps. Okay, so the basic weldman's assembled. Got the wheels on. The nuts that hold the wheels on are tightened up just until the wheel spins but doesn't wobble too much. Got that done. Um, put the tank hooks onto the base assembly. 
the tank hooks. One of the tank hooks was bent pretty bad, but I was able to straighten it out with a pair of pliers. One of the things that is not very well discussed in the manual is these bolts right here. Once it's all assembled, these holes are slotted and it's to allow for adjustment of the back tires laterally and then vertically up and down. If these screws, if the wheels are slid all the way up in the slots, this is at an angle. So you have to take a level, put it on the base, and I found that it sits pretty level if you hold the weldment and slide the wheels as far down as the slot will allow and tighten the screws and then make sure that it sits level on the ground. So just put the wheels down as far as they'll go, tighten it up, make sure it sits level and you're good to go. That part's not discussed in the owner's manual at all. And if you just assemble it and leave this part as high as it'll go in that slot, it's at a pretty steep angle. So the base is assembled and we're getting ready to move on to the next step. I believe the next step is to actually mount the, uh, the fryer itself to the base. So let's get started on that. Okay, y'all, basic assembly is done. I still need to put the thermometer in it. It's going to go right back. It comes already wrapped with uh, Teflon tape ready to go. See if they wrapped it on the right direction. They did. So after I check the thermometer inside with a boil water test, we'll put it in there. Uh, turn it around and let me shut this so it doesn't slam shut. You can see we've already mounted the jet on this plate and then mounted this plate so that it shoots the propane into this tube assembly. The uh, tank is mounted. You turn the tank so that this opening goes behind this, uh, it sits on the tank hooks. This opening goes behind this flange and then you just twist the tank. Let me see if I can demonstrate that without tearing something up. That's to remove it. Hook the tank on these two flanges down here. It's not the easiest thing to do. There we go. No bungee cord required like the old ones did. Um, let's uh, give her a quick burn test to show that it works. This is the needle valve. The tank's already open. Maybe we can see everything from here. Yeah, I think so. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the lighter in here before I start the propane. And there you have it. I'm not going to let it run very long because we don't have any oil in it. But let me just show you the flame here. You can see the flame there in the uh, port. So that's it. The basic assembly is done. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. And close the valve on the tank. Just in case there's a leak. I haven't leak tested everything quite yet. And the only thing that remains now is to wash out the inside with uh, some dishwashing liquid and water, drain it, rinse it all out real good so that there's no remaining dishwashing liquid in there. Uh, they spray some oil and grease in there to keep the pipes from rusting on the inside. So got to do that. Test the thermometer, put it on, we're done. Put eight and a half gallons of oil in it, and Friday night we're going to be cooking fish, shrimp, and potatoes. So that kind of completes the unboxing and assembly. I know it wasn't a detailed assembly video, 
kind of give you an idea of what goes into assembling one. It took one hour from start to finish, from the time we pulled it out of the box to, to this point you see right here. So washing the inside will take 15, 20 minutes. Test the thermometer, it'll only take 20, 30 seconds to screw it into the port. Make sure that it's not leaking. When we're washing it out with water, we'll be able to test that. And that's it. So thanks for tuning in to Rashley's Border Q. I'm Randy. And we'll be back Friday with a cook video to show you how this thing works. I'll be anxious to see. When I lived in Louisiana, uh, some of my friends had these and we cooked on them and they are just so, so awesome. Absolutely nothing burns on bottom. You can reuse the same oil for... <clears throat> I've been told that R&V did a big fish fry and they did over 400 pounds of fish in one batch of oil. So. I don't intend to try to take it that far, but just gives you an idea of how well it protects the oil. Y'all have a good one. I'm going to shut up and quit talking, and we'll see y'all Friday.